The objective of this topic is to gain a proper understanding of shielding gases used for aluminum and non-ferrous metals and their characteristics, application, availability, and effects on weld quality. Shielding gases are of vital importance to welding because most metals have a strong tendency to combine with harmful oxygen and nitrogen in the air, forming oxides and nitrides that are damaging to molten welds. For example, oxygen readily combines with carbon to form carbon dioxide. Although not harmful with steels, carbon dioxide can badly affect the quality of welds on non-ferrous materials. Inert gases, which do not combine with other elements, not only protect welds from contamination, but can strongly affect arc characteristics, bead profile and penetration, metal transfer, welding speed, reduction of undercutting, and cleaning action. There are six inert gases useful for welding non-ferrous metals. Argon, helium, neon, krypton, xenon, and radon. This discussion will be limited to argon and helium because the others are generally too expensive and rare to use for most common welding applications. Argon produces excellent results on non-ferrous metals, but yields poor results on ferrous metals such as low carbon steels. Welding grade argon is a common economical gas that is 99.5% pure. Flow rates can be reduced because argon is 23% heavier than air. It aids in starting the arc and creates great surface cleaning action when operated with direct current electrode positive or reverse polarity. At any given wire speed, the voltage of the argon shielded arc will be less than other lighter gases such as helium. Because there is less change in voltage, argon provides better arc stability, particularly in applications such as pulsed spray transfer. To obtain spray transfers on aluminum up to one inch thick, argon alone gives a good transfer with decreased spatter. Larger aluminum weldments from one to three inches thick require a mixture of 35% argon to 65% helium for the spray transfer mode. Both argon and helium affect the melting of the electrode, but in opposite ways. Argon creates a pinching effect that physically limits the size of the molten droplets. The same transfer, using helium, produces larger droplets which create excessive spatter and poor weld appearance. Pure helium is expensive and is used less often than argon. It is sometimes used on heavier non-ferrous metals because its higher ionization rate produces greater heat and deeper penetration. When mixed with other gases, it will generally improve the quality of welds. Helium is also used in certain applications where pure argon would cause problems with porosity. In the overhead position, for example, the heaviness of argon may cause poor shielding coverage. Helium, which is lighter than air, can be mixed with the argon to help keep the gas in the joint and around the electrode. Helium is most often mixed with argon in amounts up to 50%. Using pure helium alone is limited to more specialized applications because it tends to create unstable arc characteristics. Like other gases, Argon and helium cylinders are color-coded. Argon cylinders are painted brown, while helium is painted yellow. Green is used to identify cylinders containing oxygen. Tanks containing mixtures of gases are painted in several colors, one for each type of gas. Oxygen is mentioned because it is sometimes added to argon to help stabilize the arc in the spray mode giving better bead contour and finish. It helps to better distribute heat, thus preventing undercut. But because oxygen is an active and volatile gas, it should never be mixed with argon in percentages greater than 5%, or porosity problems are bound to occur. Experienced welders 
know that the correct selection of shielding gases is extremely important for best weld quality and appearance, or when welding is done on heavy material or in awkward positions. By carefully evaluating the type of gas required for each job, it is possible to minimize defects and to produce quality welds.